section of mineralogy that's going to last for a couple of weeks is going to be under this big heading of crystallography, where we're going to look at the building blocks of minerals from a symmetry point of view and an atomic point of view. So crystallography is this main topic, and today we're just getting into the introduction of crystallography. In the textbook, this is going to be pages 109 to 114. That's the Manual of Mineral Science. And to start this conversation, let's actually start with a bit of a game. So we're going to use this image. And I guess this is a little easier for me since I have it here on my screen. But you can just look at it. And what I want you to identify is the structural pattern within this image. Basically, we're going to look for this. Um, we're going to look for, I'm going to put this in parentheses. We're going to look for the, a motif. And when I say motif, I mean a unit that is repeated. Okay, a unit that is repeated. And just from visual inspection of this pattern, we can see that there's a repeat. We've got these squares and we've got the octagons. We could do another kind of motif, and you should add this to your notes. What if we drew commas? Here's a comma, here's a comma. Now, if I'm doing this with good penmanship, each of these commas should be identical. And the unit that's repeated is the full comma. Not just the period, not just the hook, but it's the whole thing. All right, this is a motif. Now let's go back to our image. What is the, so if we were to look at this, what is actually the smallest unit with inside of this pattern that can be repeated in, infinitely to produce the whole thing? Well, we could look at it, we could say, well, if we go from here, here, here. Now that's supposed to be a perfect square, right? That connects the centers of these. That could be one of the motifs that's repeated throughout. We could find others, right? What if we actually just took this one? What if we went from here to here to here to here? All right? We connect those up. Well, that pattern could be infinitely repeated this direction or this direction throughout. But it's actually not the smallest pattern. If you do the smallest, it's actually, you have to look at this in a slight, we tend to look at things orthogonally, which means at 90 degrees. But if we tilt our heads in a little bit, we actually see that we can reproduce this pattern in that direction or in that direction. And this is a smaller area than these. So this would be a better motif to represent this entire pattern. So underneath this crystallography and motif, we're going to put our first Roman numeral. Oh, I'm going to move back to black ink, black ink, here we go. And this is the concept of the unit cell. And what the unit cell is, it's the smallest structure, the smallest unit of a structure that can be infinitely repeated to generate the entire structure. And I'm going to write that down with you in these notes. All right, so the unit cell is the smallest unit of a structure, structure, that can be infinitely repeated to repeat the entire structure. Infinitely repeated to generate the entire structure. Entire structure. So in our example here, these are not the unit cells. No, sir. Instead, that is would be our unit cell. And of course, we're thinking about this from a perspective of mineralogy. This idea was first expressed in the early 1800s by a scientist in France. And the idea was that the unit cell gets repeated and repeated and repeated to build the entire external morphology of a mineral. Now, underneath unit cell, we're going to put another concept here, big Roman numeral, and it is another word that's very important for the entire semester, and it's lattice. At the simplest definition, a lattice is just the ordinary, not ordinary, orderly repeat of the unit cell. All right, the cell is that building block, and we repeat it across space, three-dimensional space, and that three-dimensional space is the lattice. Now, the textbook actually uses a more complicated definition than this. Let me read it to you here. The lattice is an imaginary pattern of points in which every point has an environment that is identical to every other point in the pattern. 
That's kind of a bit of a mouthful. Maybe we should just go ahead and take the time and write that down. So according to our text, the lattice is this imaginary, and that's important. It's not actually there. It's just this framework that we place things on as we're visualizing things. It's an imaginary matter pattern of points. in which every point, every point has an environment that is identical to every other point, to every other point. It's kind of like the building block for the symmetry within a mineral. I got a, a couple images here to show you for this. So here's a good example of a lattice. All right, we have a three-dimensional block. In this case, this is a cubic lattice. There's no specific origin within the mineral, and it can be repeated in any direction from itself, right? In all three dim dimensions as we make this building block. That is the lattice. Now, we can do a little bit better in visualizing this here by throwing our atoms on corners of the lattice, right? And that's what we're doing here in this example, where we take that simple, right, and it's described here as a cubic lattice, and now we're just putting on every corner an atom. And maybe this is something like sodium or it's gold, things that would actually have a cubic lattice in nature. So what we have found as mineralogists over the centuries is that centuries, maybe just one century, so we could take a mineral, this is an example of fluorite, and I'll go ahead and label that. We could take a, a mineral here like fluorite. Oh, I'm lagging out. Fluorite, which has a chemical formula of calcium and two fluorines. And if we look at the symmetry of this natural crystal, we see actually there's 90 degrees. And if we zoom in, we actually start to see this kind of cubic shape. And that's how fluorite should grow in nature, with form of a cube. Of course, there's some natural irregularities, but I hope you can recognize that this is cubic. And the what has been recognized, and let's just say this kind of as a... Um, should we go Roman numeral three? I guess we can. Later we'll do more A's and B's and little ones and little twos to keep things organized. But we're gonna put this concept here, is that crystal faces bound external form. All right, this is a big concept. So we have our crystal face right here and it is bounding the shape. But what's important about this is that these faces and the external form are actually controlled by the distribution of the unit cell. These are controlled by distribution of the unit cell and lattice. What does that mean? like Legos. We're distributing cubic Lego blocks, stacking them, stacking them, stacking them, and building up this entire shape. The science maybe behind this idea is called, let's see, what is this one called? This one's called, it's in part, let's say this, let's say it is guided. We have these two laws, and they're guided by the Brevet law and Steno's law. So let's go through these two and then finish for this lecture. So Brevet's law is summarized in this graph right here from the textbook. And basically it says that crystal faces, in fact, I'll just read it to you right here. Crystal faces prefer to connect a high density of points. I'll write this down for you in a second. But if this is our lattice, where which one of these lines that we have here are actually going to make crystal faces in our mineral? Well, Brevet's law says it's the one that connects the most points. So here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven points are on that line. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven points. What about D? 
There's only one, two, and three. E, well, that's only four. F, three. B, seven. And so Brevet's law says that this mineral wants to produce faces in these directions because it's connecting the highest number of points. So let's write that down now. Brevet's law says faces prefer um, geometries or lines, let's say directions. Faces prefer directions that connect a high density of lattice points. This means the lattice is controlling the faces of a mineral. That's a really important concept. It's why every fluorite we see has 90 degree angles. Why every galena that we see has 90 degree angles. Why every quartz we see has like 60 degree angles. It's because of that lattice. And then the last law that we're going to have in our understanding here is guided by something called Steno's law. And it's a little different, but it builds on the same idea as Brevet's law, which has to do with the angles uh, between faces and the lattice. And I guess very simply, we can just say, I'll put this image in here. Let's shrink a little bit, stack it down here under this image. But this is our image for Steno's law. And so Steno's law, I'll read it to you. It's very short. The constancy of interfacial angles. I'll tell you what that means. Constancy of interfacial angles. In this example down here, let's go example quartz. Quartz has 120 degree angles between its faces. Always. The lattice demands it. The planes that build quartz are connecting high density points according to Brevet's law. That means that a face builds in this direction and then in this direction because it's connecting, let's say, a bunch of points in the lattice. Okay, that's Brevet's law. And because this face is intersected with this face, well, there we go. The angle between the two faces is 120 degrees. And this was one of, before we had so many different techniques to identify minerals, we would measure, or scientists would measure the angles between crystal faces and use that as a way to identify minerals. So let's just say this, let's say that, uh, that this provided, it doesn't really anymore, although you can certainly use it in your exercises, it's a valuable tool for mineral identification. I think with that, let's finish this introduction to mineralogy where we or crystallography, where we introduce the motif, the unit cell, we started to talk about lattices, and how lattices have led us to the Brevet's Law and Steno's Law. As our final visualization before I sign off, here's an image I snagged from the textbook showing how we can combine the idea of the lattice, right, to stack things on top of each other, connecting points, worrying about the interfacial angles and our crystal face directions to make minerals like this diamond, that's what this one is here, which makes an octahedra, that's this shape, octahedron. And here we have a shape that's actually 12 sides, and this is how garnet forms. Garnet makes dodecahedrons. Dodecahedrons. All by the stacking of the crystal lattice.